Hey guys, it's John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I want to talk about spontaneity, okay, and how it can lead to girls complying with your compliance tests. Okay, now I'll explain what a compliance test is and how it is the center of my model. Okay, before we continue, please press the subscribe button below. Make sure you press the notification bell so you're alerted of my new videos Sunday through Thursday, soon to be changing to seven days a week. Okay, starting in two weeks, I will be putting out a video every day. Okay, and they're going to be very well produced. There's a new editor coming on board. Very sharp guy. Very skilled guy. All right, so what does this mean? Okay, first of all, for those of you that are familiar with my method, if you've watched some of my videos or if you've taken my live training or have some of my products, compliance is at the core. Okay, so when you are going to open or approach a stranger, she can comply, aka be receptive or not comply. When you go to be physical with the girl, okay, or make out with the girl, kiss the girl, she can comply or she can not comply. When you ask the girl for her phone number, that's a compliance test. When you ask her to move to a different part of the venue with you to do an isolation or to go meet your friends or whatever, that's a compliance test. When you ask the girl to leave with you, that's a compliance test. When you text her, okay, does she, does she respond? That's a compliance test. When over text, you try to set up a date or invite her out on a date. Does she, is she receptive or not? Okay, and then there's kind of like a macro level overview types of compliance tests where like in general, is she being attentive to what you're saying? Okay, is she smiling? Is she contributing to the conversation when you're talking in the interaction? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so each, this is how I've, I've constructed my game, okay? I have like a start point, which is when you approach an end point which is when you have sex with her, okay? And then there's all these different compliance tests along the way. And when she doesn't comply, okay, it goes off the, the straight line. Okay, it's similar to Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system, which I've never went through, but all my evolution and optimization led to a system that other people have likened to Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system, okay? And I'm referencing The Wolf of Wall Street. For those of you that haven't seen that, that's probably my favorite movie currently, along with Limitless and probably three-way tie with American Psycho. So, <laughs> an American Psycho is not what it sounds like. It's more just a parody on the, the modern capitalistic driven life. Okay, with Christian Bale, highly recommend that movie, Limitless, and Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, so, I know what to do from tons of data and tons of experience. I know what's gonna happen, or what can happen, for it to diverge off that straight line, okay, when there's non-compliance. And I know the optimal ways to bring it back to that straight line as fast as possible and as smoothly as possible and, you know, continue the compliance momentum forward, all right, so that you overall optimize your chances of achieving that end state of sleeping with the girl and then later getting her into your life as a regular part of your life, okay, either on rotation or harem or as a girlfriend or, or wife, okay, for those of you that are going the wonderful monogamous route. It's kind of cool. I have a bunch of lines strewn across my face, almost like a zebra. <laughs> okay. So how, how does this tie into spontaneity? Okay. I just want to give you kind of an overview of compliance first, and I'll be making a video on, on non-compliance and dealing with those things. And in my courses and my live trainings, I, I go over exactly like a lot of the core of my method is how to move things forward. Okay, so because most guys are just in the interaction, like spinning their wheels. Okay, how do I keep this going? What should I do next? What should I say, et cetera, et cetera. There's no real game plan to move things forward. Okay, so eventually the, the interaction stalls out and the girl gets bored and leaves. So I'm moving things forward. I, I instruct guys to move things forward. I tell them the key compliance tests and how they can, you know, meet non-compliance from the girl and what to do. Okay, and you're not always going to get compliance. If you do due diligence to bring it back to that straight line path and you still get non-compliance, then you can either leave the interaction or, or try to get her phone number to meet up at a later time when logistics or general compliance levels can be more in your favor. Okay, so that's a basic overview of compliance. Now, the way spontaneity ties in here is, and again, this is, you're going to be telling some white lies here. A lot of guys get really upset when I, when I give strategies that involve outright lying, okay? But I want to distinguish something. These are not malicious lies, okay? And these are not meant to misrepresent 
your character or be someone you're not. Okay, these are subtle little tricks you can do that's going to really boost the compliance. Okay, so for those of you that have my digital product, Occam's Razor, you see the hidden camera infield footage where I'm very frequently referencing that it is my wingman's birthday. Okay, and he says the same about me. Okay, now why do we do this? And we, we were doing that when we were filming a lot, we were doing this almost on a nightly basis. Why would we do that? Okay, birthdays have the mental model in people's heads of being this like once a year event. Here, I'm like, lessen these stripes a little bit here. Of, of being a, a, a once in a year event. <laughs> I'm like all washed out. <laughs> Bear with me. Oops. Okay, whatever. Okay, so birthdays have, have this connotation of, of being like this fun, adventurous type thing, okay? So when you talk about, oh, we're celebrating his birthday, we should all go hang out after this, they're not gonna be like, oh, fuck you, birthday guy. They can be like that, but it carries much more significance and it's basically a loaded, it's, it's a compliance booster is, is the term I, <laughs> I use to refer to it as. The girl or girls in the group are much more likely to comply, that is, go along with your request, if um, this is like this spontaneous fun thing, like if they push back, like, oh no, like we have to work in the morning, come on, it's his fucking birthday, just come for one drink, okay? It's his birthday, we're in a great mood, etc. okay? Now, how does this tie in to other ways to use this, this spontaneous principle, like this power to, to boost compliance? One of my favorite ones is you can text a girl, like, okay, this is kind of how I, this is like, I don't know the exact text, I kind of paraphrase it each time, but I'll say something along the lines of, just closed a big deal at work, okay? Or no, usually I'll start it off with, are you feeling, are you spontaneous, okay? Now, there's a book called Presuasion, okay, pre, that's P-R-E, not persuasion, presuasion, P-R-E, suasion, S-U-A-S-I-O-N, by Robert Caldini, okay, the infamous writer of the book Influence, okay, which is seen as one of the best books on persuasion. I think he wrote that in the 90s, and then Persuasion just came out two or three years ago, and Caldini, I was reading about, like, his analysis of, of why he took so long to put out, like, a, a sequel to it, and he said he want, he didn't want to just, like, add, I can't remember the analogy he used, he didn't want to just, like, add little branches on a tree, he wanted to, like, plant a new tree, so he wanted something so significant that it was literally like a whole separate contribution to the field of persuasion and not just building on his last stuff. Okay, so he talks about in the persuasion book how you can prime someone to say yes by like teeing them up. Okay, and this is what I do when I, when I frame a date, for instance. I say, do you like margaritas? Do you like wine? Whatever it may be. Yes. Cool. We should split a bottle of wine at my new place. Cool. We should meet for margaritas. Okay. It's much easier once, like you've built the compliance step, once she said yes to that, like, like he cites some study in the book about an experiment where someone was like trying to stop random strangers in a mall. Okay, this wasn't a pickup artist thing. Um, he was just trying to stop random strangers in the mall and just saying, hey, can I talk to you real quick? Or, or not, no, 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 he wasn't saying like that. I don't remember, but just the way like, hey, um, I have to ask you some questions or it, whatever the, the fucking line was versus, hello, would you consider yourself adventurous, right? And the person's like, sometimes says yes. There was something like 90% greater uh, results by teeing up the question versus do you consider yourself adventurous? Okay, well, since you're adventurous, I I'm curious about how you would answer such and such question. You've drawn them into the frame, so to speak. Okay, so um, when I say like, do you like margaritas or do, or do you like wine? Then it's very easy to follow on with, cool, we could split a bottle of wine at my place. That's how you frame it to the house or cool, we can meet for margaritas during the week. Now, notice I don't say, do you want to meet for margaritas? Do you want to meet for one? We could, or let's, and then you say, which day is better for you? So, so now they've, they've, already, they've already been drawn into the frame. Cool, we could split a bottle of wine, decision close. Do you prefer red or white? Both options involve complying and coming to your place. So these are very subtle and actually very powerful, persuasive, I don't, I don't it's not really manipulative because all it's doing is increasing your odds of this person meeting up. That's all this game stuff is increasing your odds to get that girl into your life and to have her be a regular part of your life or whatever your goal may be. Now, 
Um, as it ties back in that example, okay, are you spontaneous, right, over text? Yes, sometimes, or, or whatever. She might say yes, she might say sometimes, depends, whatever. Then I follow on with just closed a big deal at work, right? Just closed a big deal at work or, or just landed a big contract at work. Some kind of thing that, that should be a cause for celebration, okay? Just just signed a contract after after working on it for like three months at work. So excited, like happy emoji, happy emoji. And the girl's like, wow, that's great. Congratulations, right? That's typically what she'll say. And you'll say, um, yeah, I really want to celebrate um, with a bottle of champagne. Okay. I don't, I don't remember how I typically do it. I don't think it matters too much if you say, are you spontaneous? And then you go into the thing about what happened. Or if you talk about the big achievement thing that happened and then say, are you spontaneous? Or are you feeling spontaneous? And then when, if she says yes, or maybe, then you say, cool, I really want to celebrate right now. Let's split a bottle of champagne. Okay. Or even you can draw into the frame even, even harder by saying, um, yeah, like, like super on top of the world right now, just got a bottle of champagne, need someone to celebrate with me. And, and if she's like, yeah, I'm down or cool, then you're like, okay, here's the address. And then if she's like, oh, well, stranger's house, you're like, don't worry, like, bring pepper spray for that word. You can use the same type of objection handlers from my wine date to the house video. Okay. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, search on my channel for setting dates straight to the house. If a girl feels uncomfortable about coming straight to your house over like safety objections, if she prefers to meet in public. Okay. For the first time, then you can say, uh, bring, don't worry. Uh, LOL. I'm really back. Don't worry. Bring pepper spray for that worried LMAO. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, if she's like, oh, why can't you celebrate one of your friends? Like I just met you. Like say this is like a Tinder lead or like an, a nightclub lead that you haven't really spent any time with or much time with. Okay. You can say, oh, well, my friends are really busy today. Like I already hit up a couple people. Like you would really make my day, right? Now she feels like obligated almost in a sense, just like with the birthday example, you're not gonna be like, fuck you birthday boy. Like go have a nice time on your own, you know, rather than want to be part of it. And it's the same thing here. You're like, I've got a bottle of champagne. I really want to celebrate. My friends are busy. You would really make my night, right? Now, look at how much more powerful that is persuasively than just saying out of the blue, hey, uh, do you want to come over and split a bottle of champagne today? She's going to be like, uh, right? And then she hasn't been like primed yet. She hasn't been like the, the slide hasn't been greased, so to speak. And it's much easier for her to just be like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know this guy, et cetera, et cetera. There's no fun, spontaneous thing. Okay. Now, another thing you can do, you can text a girl late at night, even like a new lead, like say it's like a Friday night or some shit. You can text some new leads like, Hey, what are you up to? Right. Um, and she's like, Oh, out with friends. You can type, and it doesn't even need to be on Friday or Saturday. You can text a girl randomly and then, what are you up to? She tells you, I'm, I'm feeling really spontaneous right now. Let's split a bottle of wine, wink face, or like, um, I'm not sure if you're spontaneous or not in parentheses, big points if you are, but let's totally just split a bottle of wine right now. Or like, let's, let's meet up. Let's meet up right now. Like I know it's crazy, but let's meet up right now. So this is a way this technique can be used to get girls to come over like right then and there. Like say you have a say you have a date that flakes, um, or you have a time slot that opens up. Like say you had a, a other commitment, and now that time slot suddenly opens up. You can say, you can text to a few girls. Hey, what are you up to right now? They don't, you know, they, they don't have any plans or, or they're not really doing anything. You can say, cool, just closed a, a big deal at work, and got a bottle of champagne. Really want to start. It doesn't need to be exotic guys. Like, what if I don't drink? I don't even personally drink anymore. It doesn't need to be about champagne really want to celebrate, like, let's order Thai food, like, really want to celebrate, let's order sushi, really want to celebrate, let's, let's order some takeaway, what's what they call it in Europe, let's order some delivery food in the USA, and, you know, fucking celebrate together, what kind of food do you like, okay, again, you're talking in the frame as if she's already complied, all right, so I hope this is helpful, for those of you that are not comfortable uh, making up the fact that you closed a big deal at work, or whatever, you don't need to make like an actual lie about an event. You don't need to say it's your birthday. You don't need to say you just closed a big deal at work. You can say, Hey, what are you up to? 
they say, oh, not, nothing much. Cool, I'm feeling really spontaneous. Um, let's order some takeaway food, question mark. What kind of food do you like, right? You don't, you don't really kind of leave it for them to, to give you like a no. I talk about another video like that. You don't really want to be like, do you want to get some food? Because I can be like, oh, no, I'm good, thanks. Instead, let's order takeaway food. Let's order delivery food. What kind of food do you like right after that? So now she's thinking like, hmm, what kind of food do I like, right? And if she's like, oh, I'm not sure, like we've never hung out before, like, oh, whatever, whatever, then it's just down to objection handling, okay? You can be like, come on, I really want to celebrate. My friends are busy, you know. You don't even need to, you know, that's not really lying. You can just say like, or, or okay, you just substitute that with, I'm in a really spontaneous mood and I hit up a couple of friends and they're busy. Would be cool to hang out right now. Sound good? Okay, so that's pretty much it. I uh, hope that was really helpful. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful. Share it with your friends. Post it in your Facebook groups and your WhatsApp forums because it's very rare to find real value these days. Um, tomorrow is actually going to be six weeks with no alcohol. As you can see, I'm looking more vibrant in the face. The spark is back in my eyes. And my life is just improving on like all fronts. My, the business is exploding, uh, making a lot of good progress in the gym. I feel really great. There's, I have lots of energy and I feel extremely healthy. Um, no more hangovers, which is fucking awesome. It's really good. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a video on how I, how I broke out of that and how you can overcome different addictions. I think I have a really, really, really good technique that I think will apply to anyone that's addicted to, to anything because I was addicted to alcohol. I will get into that on the video and it largely came from using it to overcome social anxiety in the, in the early days of, of doing pickup and game because I have general and social anxiety disorder. But over time, I became the extroverted, confident guy and I didn't need the alcohol anymore, although it was at that point kind of an addiction and also a large central part. Oh, I go on a date, drink alcohol. Oh, I go to the nightclub to do game, drink alcohol. And I was doing dates and game all the time, so I was drinking alcohol all the time. But really, like everything's like a hundred times better now without, without it. So um, for those of you, for those of you that, that do drink and you can only have two or three and do it responsibly, you know, to get over your approach anxiety or to, or to vibe and flow, that's totally fine. I was definitely abusing it personally. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions about any of the stuff I talked about with uh, the deals for the product or the Facebook group, or just anything in general, you can email me at johnanthonylifestyle at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to get back on uh, some infield breakdowns as well. I'm, I'm kind of holding off on the roast for now until I have the new editor on board, which is going to, we're going to start releasing stuff in two weeks, me and him. Um, he's going to be starting work for me next week. So I will create some roast material pass along to him and publish it once he's done his magic on it. Cause I want those videos to be pro produced rather than just me ranting in front of a webcam. Although the, the most vid top popular video on my channel right now is the Tyler blast where I'm in like an Airbnb in Portugal, like ranting hammered in front of a fish clock. <laughs> so I'm sure Tyler enjoyed watching that one. All right. Thank you guys. Um, rewatch this. There's some really good points in here. Try it out. This is just about boosting compliance, um, you know, so that you can persuasively be effective and get the girl to comply with moving things forward. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Talk soon.